Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to another LibGDX Toolbox Tool Tip. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about using AdMob to apply ads to our games. So if you're interested in monetizing dim apps, go ahead and stick with me. So I just want to show you that this is what we're going to be starting off with. Basically, it's the hello world of LibGDX games, I guess you can call it call it but it's basically just a screen that renders a uh, uh, image here the bad logic game logo uh, and here's the code for it if you're not familiar with this you probably want to check out some of my previous tutorials the so first thing we need to do is include the Google Play API for our ad mob and what we want to do here is we want to go to Gradle scripts in our build Gradle that's for our project so it'll say project ad mob demo we'll double click on this the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add a version that we want uh, so we'll do add mob version um, equals I think it's 8.3.0 and then what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and scroll down here to where it says project Android and we're gonna go ahead and compile that uh, using great I've, I've copied and pasted it. I hope you guys don't mind but it's com.google.android.gms uh, colon play dash services dash add and then we're going to exchange this 8.3.0 for add mob version and there we go uh, since uh, Gradle has changed you're gonna want to go ahead and sync it it'll go ahead and download uh, or basically compile those into your game so you may get an error that's saying uh, min SDK 8 cannot be smaller than version 9 and that's because ad mob only works on uh, SDKs that are 9 or greater uh, so what you're going to go to is your Android manifest folder here double click on that and where it says min SDK version equals 8 you're going to have to set it to 9 and then go ahead and hit run again and let it compile that should fix everything. So now let's navigate to the file that we're going to do the majority of our work in and that is the android launcher.java file. It can be found in the androids directory under java and your home directory and android launcher here. So this is where we're going to do the majority of our code. So before we get started I want to throw out a disclaimer here. We're going to be using some verbiage that is probably going to be familiar only to people who are familiar with Android development. Things like activities and views and stuff like that. So if you're not familiar with that you can surely follow along. You may not understand completely but if you uh, you know do it exactly as I do it you're going to come out with the right result. Uh, but you may get more understanding of this if you do a little research on uh, Android development. So there you go. Do with it what you will. So first thing I'd like to point out is that uh, in our Android launcher, it extends Android application. Now, if we look at what Android application is, it is an activity, okay? So for uh, you uh, Android developers, you'll know that and uh, activities can have views. And what we're going to do is uh, use a um, relative layout to set two different views one for our uh, libgdx game and another for our ads and what we can do is we'll basically show the view when we want to show the ads so we'll have a view specifically for ads we're gonna call it ad view um, and then when we want the ads to disappear we're going to uh, disable that view uh, so let's go ahead and get started on coding so actually one more thing before we get started, I was assuming that everybody would have knowledge of AdMob previously, but if you don't, you need to go to google.com slash AdMob. You're going to add a new application, whatever the title of your application will be and be posted on the Google Play Store. Um, you will create the new app, then you're going to create a new ad unit. Um, you can select banner or interstitial. Um, we're going to be using uh, banner ads for this tutorial. When you select banner, you can select the color, the text, um, how many times it refreshes, or how often it refreshes. Then you're going to name the ad uh, something like top banner or whatever. You'll save it. Um, let's see, let's cancel it here. And then you're going to see a new uh, banner ad or whatever you named your banner here. And then right below it, you're going to have an ad unit ID. And that is what we're going to be using in our application to display our ads. So make sure you go ahead and copy that and have that available. Okay, let's start out by doing a private static final string um, called tag equals uh, Android launcher. And this will be for logging. Then we're going to do a protected 
add view and if you don't have add view avail available it's because you didn't do the gradle scripts properly so make sure you have that uh, and we'll just call this add view okay so let's create our view here so add view equals new add view and it takes in a uh, activity we'll just say this then what we're going to do is add a listener uh, to this add view so when uh, the ad loads we get some sort of log in our console so add view dot set add listener to a new add listener and we want on add loaded and so we'll just cut this and we'll say log dot I don't know info we'll give it our tag and just say uh, uh, add loaded and let's make sure we bring in that so Android there we go next let's go ahead and set out our layout and I think we should probably do it above this so let's say let's create a new relative layout called layout equals new relative layout and it takes in an activity so we can pass it this then we're going to put our Android game inside of a view and that's going to be the main part of our layout here uh, so we'll say view game view equals and then we're going to copy this down here copy paste it right here and instead of initialize, we'll initialize for view. And then let's go ahead and move this up to right above there. So there we go. Next, we need to add that view to our layout. So layout dot add view game view. There we go. Now we need to configure the size of our ad. So let's do add view dot set add size. And you'll have to go to the Android ad mobs uh, documentation to figure out what size is appropriate for your device. If you uh, set a size too large um, for the device that it's being shown on, the ad will not show and you won't be able to monetize it. So, uh, But what we're going to do is add size dot smart banner and uh, smart banner uh, basically allows us to um, basically the height I think is like 50 pixels or 100 pixels or something like that and the uh, width of it uh, reflects the width of the device so it's a little bit easier to set up so we're going to use that here and then we're going to set up add view dot set add unit ID and this is where you're going to put in the um, the ID for the ad you created in ad mob previously so I'm going to go ahead and paste mine in now so next we're going to create an ad request uh, builder so add request dot builder and we're going to call that builder equals new ad request dot builder and oops this needs to not be there this is what is going to request the ads from Google for us. Now there's plenty of ways to configure this to request only certain ads, but we're gonna just keep it as the default here. Now next we're gonna set out a, a layout parameter for where the, the look of the view for our ads. So what we're gonna do is say uh, relative layout dot layout params, and we're gonna call this add params equals new relative layout dot layout params and this is going to take in a width and a height uh, so we're going to just tell it to wrap its content width and height wise um, so we'll just I already copied and pasted this so two parameters wrap content on both and uh, then we'll just say a layout dot add view and we'll put in our add view is the first parameter and then our add params is our second and there we go finally we just got to tell our ads to load so we'll do add view dot load ad and give it our builder builder dot build a new ad and then we'll set our content uh, content view to our layout that is our relative layout now we can test it so the first time you run this, it's not going to work. Your ads won't show. And here's one reason is that uh, Google won't show live ads uh, in the development process. They don't want to pay people or, you know, pay out ad revenue for you developing uh, your game or whatever. Um, and so it wants you to add a test device 
um, to your code. And so once you run this, you can look through uh, the log cat here and you'll scroll down until you see uh, the ad mob uh, throwing a info to you that says add test device and it gives you uh, this number here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just copy this number right here, copy this. And then um, under our builder, what we're gonna say is builder.addTestDevice and pass it the string that we just copied. And now we can run it hopefully effectively. So here we go. Um, we have our app here um, and it has an ad mob app at the top. I'm sorry for the poor audio quality. I had to unplug my good microphone to do this. Uh, but there you go. Uh, every 6,000, 60,000 milliseconds or every one minute, the ad will reload. And we can see here that um, our log here, the Android launcher ad loaded uh, every time a new ad loads. So, so let's just wait. Hopefully it'll come up here shortly. So it starts an ad request. It says it sends it out to Google and then it reloads a new uh, ad. Unfortunately, we don't see a new ad. Um, but there we go. So there we go. We have ads working inside of our game. Now I know the first question people are going to ask is how I can control these ads from the game itself. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. Um, so we're going to go to our core uh, project here and we're going to create a new Java class called ad handler. And this is going to be not a class, but a interface. And this interface has one method. Um, public void show ads and it takes in a boolean called show and now we just need to implement that inside of our Android launcher and pass it to our game. Now you're about to get a crash course in Android threading. The first thing is is that Android does not like you manipulating the main thread from other threads. Our libgdx game is going to run on its separate thread and it cannot manipulate uh, the main thread, like uh, the ad view and the game views and stuff like that itself directly. It needs to send a message uh, to the main thread and say, hey, this is what I need to be done. Uh, you do the work for me, okay? And so we're going to do that by using a handler, and that's what uh, Android uh, calls it. So we're going to create a handler, uh, handler um, equals new handler, and... It's going to take in, or it has a one method that we're going to use called handle message. And this is where we're going to do the work. Now a message here, this message right here has uh, basically a couple things. It has a message itself and then it has a message code. Really, we're just gonna be using the message code here. Uh, so we can get the message code from message.what and we're going to use a switch statement on message.what. So that returns just an integer uh, message code. And so what we're gonna do is create up here actually, above, we're going to say private final int show ads equals one and then we'll copy that and paste it and this will be zero and this will be hide ads and so we'll switch our message what which will return either show ads or hide, uh, hide ads and um, case that it's show ads we'll set the ad view dot set visibility to view dot visible and then break and then the case that it's hide ads we'll set the ad view dot set visibility to view dot gone and break that so next we want to make our android launcher implement the ad handler that we created earlier so implements add handler and then we need to bring in that method generate it implement methods the show add method and then we'll just say handler dot send empty message and send empty message just sends the message code like we were talking about earlier and then we'll say if it says show then we're going to send the empty message with the show ads otherwise we're going to send 
hide ads. So there we go. So now let's go back to our ad mob demo. This is the main libgdx game here. And we're going to create two new things, an ad handler called handler and a boolean toggle. Um, and then we're gonna create a constructor for our ad mob demo that takes in a uh, ad handler, handler. And what we'll say is this dot handler equals handler. And then just for testing purposes down here in the render method, we're going to say if gdx dot input dot just touched, then we'll say um, handler dot show ads um, toggle. And then we'll say toggle equals not toggle. So, there. so now finally we can go back to our Android launcher and since now it takes in an ad handler and our Android launcher is an ad handler, we can just pass it this and now we can test it. So now back in our game, we have our uh, uh, ad here and I can click on the screen and uh, toggle our ads. So we totally did it. So I did have one small problem and that, that was that the ads weren't showing until the second ad would populate. So initially when you started the app, uh, there was no ads uh, visible and then when it reloaded, then the ad would show uh, the second time. Um, I think it's a problem on my end, can't really find it on Stack Overflow or what was going on. So I just rigged it up myself. Here's a little hack to uh, solve that problem. Uh, maybe you guys can uh, let me know what a better solution would be. Um, int visibility uh, equals uh, add view dot get visibility and then add view dot set visibility to add view dot gone and then set it back to add view set visibility to visibility so there you go so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. I know this is not exactly how you're going to implement ads in your game. You're going to want to complete a level maybe and then show an ad. But I hope you got the premise of how to uh, tell an the uh, Android device that you want to show an ad and populate it on your screen and not just with a click of the button on your game. Um, a quick credits to the libgdx uh, wiki. Um, that's where I got some of the code for this tutorial. I also edited it quite a little bit myself. Um, so I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you uh, have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. If you start making lots of money through ads in your game uh, after watching this video, uh, I hope you remember me on my Patreon campaign. I give you two big thumbs up for that. I, I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.